what we've been talking about a lot today with our soundproofing kits and systems is insulation, isolation, and mass. Could you talk about those areas and how important they are when you're specifying acoustic systems? Okay, well, let's, let's start with mass, maybe. We talked before about the starting point for acoustic design. So you might have concrete floor structures which are very high in mass. So you've already got a lot of mass in the structure. Adding mass to a separating floor might not be so critical in that situation. You might have a drop ceiling below, layer of board, but the mass of it isn't, yeah, as it isn't highly critical. You might be in a timber floor situation where you haven't got that mass, and then it becomes about adding, adding some high mass layers, such as your plasterboard, your sound block plasterboard, or your fire line plasterboards are higher in mass than your standard plasterboards and there's other specialist building boards which could add, add, add significant mass to a system. Isolation, floating floors, good example. So from an impact sound point of view, you know, you can have a floating floor, which the aim of it effectively is to isolate the floor from the structure below. And likewise, we're doing the same with ceilings. We're using resilient bar ceilings to decouple, isolate as best we can the ceiling from the structure above or an MF ceiling on acoustic hangers, we're isolating those ceiling layers again. Independent timber floor and ceiling joists, they are completely separate. Any connections you would want to make sure were as limited as possible and isolated potentially using acoustic hangers. You know, insulation is good just to dampen down the resonances within the voids. Good practice, mineral wool within, within all voids within the structure.